Adisa Baba Fairy Tales and Bedtime Stories for Kids. Once upon a time there lived a young couple in a land far far away. They did not have any children, but they really wanted to have a baby girl. After a short period of time, the young lady was expecting a baby. One day, when she was looking out of the window, she saw a beautiful lettuce garden next door. From that moment on, she could not think of anything else but to eat that lettuce. Oh, dive, I cannot eat that lettuce. The lady lost her appetite and lost an enormous amount of weight. Until one day, finally her husband got so worried for her. He promised his wife that he'd bring her a bunch of lettuce. Don't worry, my darling. I will go and get you some lettuce. But you know, it's very dangerous. The house next door belonged to a mighty witch, and the garden was surrounded by big walls, which no one dared to enter. The husband gathered all his strength and climbed the wall, entered the garden, and picked a handful of lettuce. His wife ate the lettuce with great pleasure and felt a little bit better. But unfortunately, a handful wasn't enough for her. The day after, her husband went into the garden again. But this time, the witch was waiting for him. How dare you come into my garden and steal my lettuce? My wife is pregnant and she craves for your lettuce. You could have asked for my permission, you know. We are all very afraid of you. I didn't think you would allow me. Forgive me. Forgive you? You will be punished for this. If my wife can't eat the lettuce, she will get sick and won't be able to give birth. Please. Then how about Adele? You take as many lettuces as you want, but only in one condition. As soon as your baby is born, you will give it to me. Out of fear, her husband immediately accepted the deal. After a few months, the baby was born. Soon after, the witch came and took the baby away. She named the baby Rapunzel because the type of lettuce the baby's mother had craved for was named Rapunzel. The witch took great care of the girl. When Rapunzel turned 16, she became a very beautiful young girl. The witch put her in a tall tower in the middle of the woods, but this tower did not have a staircase. There was only one small window at the very top. The witch had never cut the beautiful girl's blonde hair. When she came to visit her, she yelled to call her from below. Rapunzel! Rapunzel! your golden hair down it's your mama dear Rapunzel led her long braided golden hair down through the small window and with the help of Rapunzel's hair the witch made it to the top of the tower this went on for many years one day a prince came into the forest to hunt and heard a beautiful voice singing far away from the woods. What a wonderful voice! He thought and rode his horse towards the beautiful sound. As he arrived to the tower where Rapunzel lives, he looked left and then right, but saw no stairs or anything else to climb up the tower.
Mesmerized by the beauty of the voice, the prince came to the tower every day but couldn't figure out how he could climb up. One night, once again as he was approaching the tower, he noticed the witch was waiting below. Rapunzel! Rapunzel! Let your golden hair down! It's your mother, dear! Rapunzel led her long braided golden hair down through the small window and with the help of Rapunzel's hair, the witch made it to the top of the tower. The next day, just after sunset, the prince went to the tower, changing his voice. Rapunzel! Rapunzel! Let your golden hair down! It's your mother, dear! First, seeing somebody else other than her mother for the first time in her life, Rapunzel got a little scared. You're not my mother. Why did you come here? There is no reason for you to be scared. I heard you sing and fell in love with your voice. I just wanted to see whom this voice belonged to. Rapunzel really liked what the prince said and was not scared anymore. For a while, Everything went smoothly and the witch did not recognize anything. Finally, one day, the prince asked Rapunzel to marry him. Will you marry me? Rapunzel happily accepted this handsome prince's proposal. But Rapunzel did not have any way to climb down this tower. Suddenly, she had a bright idea. Prince started to bring a piece of fabric every time he visited the tower. Rapunzel was tying these pieces together to make a rope. But one day, Rapunzel made a big mistake and accidentally slipped something out of her mouth. Mother, Prince climbs my hair faster than you do. Watch, Prince! Um... Watch, Prince! At that moment, the witch realized that there was something fishy and started yelling at her. How could you betray me? I was just trying to protect you from the evil of the world. Not being able to handle her rage, the witch suddenly cut Rapunzel's beautiful golden hair. <laughs> and then sent her to a desert far, far away. That night, the witch stayed in the tower and waited for the prince to arrive. A little while later, she heard the prince from down below. Rapunzel! Rapunzel! Let your golden hair down! It's me, the prince! The witch let the hair down she cut from Rapunzel Aware of what was waiting for him, the prince started to climb. When he came up, seeing the witch instead of Rapunzel, he figured that something very bad had happened. When the witch started to charge at him, the prince stumbled back and fell down from the tower. bushes below, he managed to stay alive. But because of the thorns poking his eyes, he could not see anymore. Blinded Prince kept walking around the forest, looking for Rapunzel with tears in his eyes. He fed himself plants and wild fruits he found in the forest. 
He walked so far that he finally arrived to the desert where Rapunzel lived. And suddenly something unexpected happened. He heard a sweet voice singing. He recognized the owner of the voice straight away. This is the voice of Rapunzel. He started walking towards the beautiful voice. At the same time, he was yelling. Rapunzel! 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 Rapunzel also recognized the prince's voice. My prince! She started running towards him. My prince! Finally, they had found each other. Upon seeing him, Rapunzel hugged her prince and shed tears of joy. Rapunzel's tears wet the prince's eyes. And all of a sudden, a miracle happened. And the prince's eyes opened up. He started to see again. Seeing this, Rapunzel was so happy. Together, they went to the prince's kingdom where people greeted them with joy. And they lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, there lived a little girl. This girl wore a red riding hood at all times. That's why everybody used to call her Little Red Riding Hood. Darling! Yes, Mummy? You know your grandmother is ill. Would you take her the cookies I baked and the fresh herbs I picked from the woods? Of course, Mummy, I will. The little girl, with her red riding hood as always, started her journey to her grandmother's house. Do not leave the road in the bunny forest, sweetheart, said her mother as she was leaving. Little Red Riding Hood started walking in the forest while joyously singing songs. I wonder why they call it the Bunny Forest. I haven't seen any bunnies along the way. Little Red Riding Hood came to a road filled with flowers. There were all kinds of coloured flowers. I should pick some flowers for my grandmother. She'll be very pleased. While Little Red Riding Hood was picking the flowers, she did not realize that she was drifting away from her path. At that moment, she heard a sound coming from the bushes. Suddenly, a big bad wolf approached in front of her. Little Red Riding Hood was so scared that when she saw the wolf right in front of her eyes, she dropped the basket that she was carrying. The wolf jumped closer to her and collected the cookies she had dropped from the basket and gave them back to Little Red Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood was amazed by this unexpected gesture from the wolf. Thank you. Where are you heading, little girl? To my grandmother's house, the yellow house at the end of this forest. She is not feeling well, so I'm bringing her cookies and healthy herbs. Hmm, really? By the way, you can call me Little Red Riding Hood like everybody else does. I'll head on first and let your grandmother know that you're on your way so that you can continue picking up your beautiful flowers. Right at that moment, he heard a gunshot of an approaching hunter's rifle and ran away as fast as he could. Little Red Riding Hood looked around for a moment and started crying, realizing that she was lost. Hearing her crying, the hunter approached and came next to her. What are you doing alone here, little girl? It's very dangerous around here. I'm looking for a big bad wolf whom I've been hunting for a very long time. Little Red Riding Hood was very ashamed because she had not listened to her mother and left the road in the bunny forest. So she could not tell the hunter that she had met the wolf. Um, well, I was bringing cookies to my ill grandmother living at the end of the forest and I got lost. Let me bring you to your grandma's home then. They started to walk together 
And right then, the wolf took a shortcut and quickly made it to the grandmother's house. He knocked on the door. The grandmother yelled from inside. Who is it? The wolf changing his voice. It's me, Grandma. Little Red Riding Hood. I brought you cookies and fresh herbs from the woods. The door is open, my dear. You can come in. The wolf smirked and stormed in through the open door. When a while later, Little Red Riding Hood and the hunter arrived at the grandmother's house. Go, little girl. Go next to your grandmother as soon as possible. <laughs> the hunter went back on his way. Little Red Riding Hood knocked on the door. Her grandmother yelled from inside. Who is it? Um, it's me, Grandma, Little Red Riding Hood. The door is open, my darling. You can come in. Little Red Riding Hood hesitated for a moment because the sound she heard did sound a little different than her grandmother. She then remembered that her grandmother was ill. Well, grandmother probably sounds like that because she is ill. Little Red Riding Hood opened the door and went in. The wolf dressed in grandmother's clothing with her nightcap and her glasses was lying in the bed. He also closed the drapes so that it became dark inside and Little Red Riding Hood could not recognize him. I thank you, darling, for all your trouble getting all the way here to bring me food. Come next to me so I can give you a hug. Come, my darling. Come closer. Little Red Riding Hood left the basket on the floor, but she did not get too close to the bed because her grandma looked different. Why are your arms so long, Grandma? So that I can hug you better. Mm, why are your ears so big? So that I can hear you better. But why are your eyes so huge? So that I can see you better. Um, why are your teeth so sharp, Grandmother? So that I can eat you better. <laughs> the wolf jumped out of the bed and charged at the Little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> At that moment, Little Red Riding Hood realized that it wasn't her grandmother lying in the bed, but instead, the big bad wolf she had ran into Help! along the way. Help! Help me! The hunter heard Little Red Riding Hood scream. Help! Help me! And ran straight to the house, stormed into the open door and caught the wolf immediately. I finally got you, big bad wolf. Now you're in my hands. The hunter cut the wolf's belly and rescued the grandmother. Thank you for saving us, Mr. Hunter. You're welcome. But promise me, little girl, that you will never forget what your mother asks of you. Mm -hmm. With great appetite, grandmother ate all the cookies Little Red Riding Hood had brought for her boiled the healthy herbs to make a cup of tea and instantly got well. Little Red Riding Hood promised her grandmother that she will never ever fall into the words of a bad wolf again. Little Red Riding Hood was walking in the forest once again singing along merrily as she ran into the same wolf again. The wolf was punished by the hunter to clean the forest and he was very ashamed about what he did when he saw the Little Red Riding Hood. The bunny forest became full of joy, bunnies and flowers like it was once before. <laughs>